as a result, that jury will find Jim Williams not guilty of the crime. After four trials and eight years of his life, he walks away a free man in 1989. Came back home to establish the antiques business again and would throw the Mercer House Christmas party in December, and it was always the height of the Savannah social scene. But less than a month after that party, January 1990, William's body is found dead on the floor in the study. No sign of any violence, no sign of a struggle. The man was never sick a day in his life. And a medical examiner's report will state most likely natural causes, perhaps a heart attack. But of course, everybody goes, really? Natural causes at 59? That's a little young. So what really happened? Did the spirit of the boy come back, conspire with the house, and get the revenge on that second acquitted murderer? to have the Mercer House property. Now when Williams passed away, the estate was left behind in his will to his mother. It was mom that allowed the filming of the movie to take place here in the house. When mom passed away, the estate was left behind to his sister. It is his sister Dorothy that still lives in the house today. And out of respect for Dorothy is why I tell the story on this side of the street. It's quite fine in Georgia area, are ubiquitous palmetto bugs could be any of that. He didn't pay any attention to it either, but one night the noises in the master bedroom suite fireplace are so loud it woke up both he and his wife. Discovers the apparition of a young boy standing at the foot of the bed. Estimated to be about eight or nine years old. Was in knickers and a white uh, faded shirt there just for a moment or two before he disappeared in a wisp of smoke back into the fireplace. The guy said he saw the boy seven times in the three years that he lived there. Each time he would stay just a little bit longer, got a little more bold in the way he presented himself. Almost as if he was more comfortable with the couple, that he had accepted the couple in his house. Not exactly sure it went the other way around, if you really think about it. Do you really ever get more? Five years, Dean Owens played that harp in the Savannah Symphony gave concerts and recitals around the country. He actually traveled to Europe on a couple of occasions to perform. But he buys the house here in 1951. The woman that sold it to him was Florence Corson. And at the time that she sold it, Florence had a keen interest in these ground floor spaces. Would ask Dean, what are you gonna do with that area down there? And it was Dean's idea to turn the space into two apartments. Says, you know what, it's a big house. I don't make that much money with the symphony. It'd be nice to have that extra income. Sets him up, begins renting him out, but in the first two years that he was here in the house, Dean Owens would have 20 different sets of tenants that came in and out of